Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Mindstorm Minecraft server development series. In this video, I'm going to teach you about blocks. What I'll be doing is teaching you guys the fundamentals of placing blocks and just working with blocks in general, how to configure them and how to get information from them. It's all pretty easy, so this should be a short video. To actually test this out, we're going to make a new event listener for the player interact block event, which is going to be triggered whenever someone right clicks a block. That way we can make it so that when someone right clicks a block in our world, we transform that block into a new block. And with that, we can learn how blocks work, okay? So we're gonna do global event handler dot add listener. We're gonna do player block interact event dot class. Then we're gonna make a lambda. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this to event. And so if we do event dot, we have all this different information here, like the block that was interacted with, the player, the position of the block that was interacted with, the instance, so what world that block was in or what instance the block face, the cursor position, the hand, and all that stuff, okay? All pretty useful information. So we're gonna start with the hand, so get hand. We're gonna say if events.getHand is equal to hand, which is an enum, hand.main. You have main and also off. These are your main hand and off hand. So we're gonna do main. So if they interact using their main hand or right click using their main hand, this will be true. And we'll just send the message to test it out. So we'll do events.getPlayer.SendMessage, you interacted with a block. I think at this point in the series, this should be simple enough to understand. So we're just making a new event handler here for the player block interact event. And we're checking to see whenever the event is triggered, if the hand that was used for the interaction was a was the player's main hand. And then if it is, we're going to send the player a message. Okay, so let's just run this and build the server and jump on the server and test it out. All right, I'm back in the server now. So to test this out, we just need to go up to any block and right click it and boom, it says you interacted with the block. If I left click, that does not trigger the event. It's only if I right click, but it's also using my main hand. So this little hand that I've got shown here, I don't even know how to switch to my off hand anyway. I've never really done that. So anyways, it works, which is good. So now let's try working with a block. So the first thing that we could do is extract information from blocks. So this event itself has to do with, you know, player interacting with blocks. So we can get the block from that by doing events.get block. And this returns a block. So we can store that in a variable, so var block is equal to event dot get block. So with this block, you can do block and do dot, and now you see all these different methods here. So you can get information about the block just generally, if it's air, if it's liquid, if it's solid, namespace, possible states, properties, um, stuff like that. So properties we'll talk about in a second, but you'll also get a lot of information from the registry. So the registry contains information about the current block. So if you do registry, that's a method, and you can do dot on that, and then you can get other important information like the material. This is probably the most important thing that you'll ever need from a block. This is just the actual material itself, like a grass block, a wooden door, or an oak door, um, stuff like that. Those are all controlled by materials. All of the different items and blocks in the game all have a material behind the scenes that you represent it with. So this is how you can get the material of the current block by doing block.registry.material. You can also get the block entity, the ID, is it a block entity, collision shape, um, friction, hardness, is air, is liquid, all kinds of information, is solid, occludes. Yeah, so just whenever you need information about a block, the registry is a good place to get that information, okay? Something that you'll notice though is that there's not really a way to get the location of the block just by these methods here. So in this case, since we have the player interact event, we can do events.getBlockPosition, and that's how you would get the position of the block in this certain instance, okay? This returns a block vector, which is just the... Uh, X, Y, Z coordinates of the block pretty much. So you can get the block X, Y, and Z. But I think what you really wanna see is how to modify the world or the instance, and then also create blocks. So creating blocks. So to test this out, what we're gonna do is make it so that whatever block you right click, we're gonna turn that into a whole nother block, okay? So to create a block, we just need to get an instance of it. So we could do var new block is equal to, and then we could do block, which is from mindstom. So net.mindstom.server.instance.block dot, and then you have all the blocks in the game. So every single block in the game should be here. So you just need to find whatever block you want to put. Let's do a crafting table, for example. Crafting table. So this little variable that we have here stores a reference to the crafting table block, which we can now use. So we can start by getting the instance. So events.get instance. So this is the instance that the event happened in, where the block was right clicked. Dot and then we could do set block. So this is how you can modify a specific block in that instance. And as you can see here, all you have to do is tell it where to put that block and it will put it for you. So X, Y, Z, which is the coordinates and then the actual block itself. Or you can also do a point object. And if we do just event dot get block position, this inherits from point. So this will work as a valid location. So whatever block 
uh, we just right clicked to trigger this event here. This will get the location of that block. We're passing it into set block. And then now we can pass a new block. So that will replace the current block in that position with this new block that we have, which in this case is a crafting table. And that's it. That's all we got to do. Let's try it out. Okay, back on the server now so we can right click blocks. And look at that. Every single block that we right click turns into a crafting table, just as we expect. Because what it does is, again, every time you right click a block, that triggers the player interact block event, which will then get the instance that this happened in, and then set that position where the block was clicked into a new block, which is a crafting table. So pretty cool. And as you can see, it's pretty simple to do this. All you have to do is call instance.setBlock and then pass in the block. And then actually getting the block is so easy itself. You just do block dot and then whatever the block is that you're trying to set it to. Now the thing is you may not want the default state of whatever block you're trying to set. Sometimes you want something a little more advanced. So for example, um, let's say that you have a door block. So you could do something like oak door and you want to make it so that the door is open by default or the door is facing a specific direction. What you could do for that is set the property of the block. So after you do block dot and then whatever the block is, you can do dot with property, or you can do multiple at once, but with property, and you can specify the property that you're trying to set along with the value. And so the question is, since this is just taking a random string here, how do you know what properties you can set for these blocks here? And I'll have a link for this in the description below, but this is the Minecraft documentation. And this has the documentation for block states, which is also known as block properties. So these are all the different blocks in the game, along with their properties that you can set on those blocks, which is pretty freaking awesome. So you have all kinds of stuff like dirt, for example, um, if it's normal dirt or coarse dirt. So for example, these are the different properties for a redstone repeater. You have the delay, which by default is one, but you also have two, three, four. So this is the redstone repeater's delay and redstone ticks. You have what direction it's facing. So by default it's north, but it can be east, south, or west. Um, yeah, it gives you information on what that means, if it's locked or not, if it's powered or not. Pretty freaking cool. So you have same thing for redstone torch if it's lit or not. So basically anytime you want to place down a block with more advanced properties, all you need to do is just know what property to set. You could refer to the documentation here and then you can set it using with property. So if we go back, so the block that we have here is the oak door, right? So if we come back to the documentation, let's just find door. So right here, doors. So for doors, we have a bunch of different properties. We have facing, so what direction the door is facing. You can also specify the half of the door that is placed. So you can place just the lower part of the door or the upper part of the door, which is interesting. You can specify the hinge if it's on the left side or the right side. Let's try this out. So we're going to do the half property, so half. And then the only values for that is upper and lower. So we're going to try upper. And let's just see what that looks like when we place the door. So we can came back on the server now. And so if I right click a block, look at that. I only get the upper part of a door, which looks weird but that's because we have modified the default state of our block that we're placing so that it's basically telling it to put only the upper half. So that is what properties can do for you. This is just one example here we're using doors, but um, you can imagine that any block that has any sort of complexity to it, um, you can modify using these uh, state properties, okay? And it's pretty easy to figure out. You just gotta refer to the documentation. Let me give you guys one more example here. So another one I wanna show you is the sweet berry bush, sweet berry bush. For this one, I think this one's pretty cool. So you have the age of the sweet berry bush. So it starts at zero, but you can have zero, one, two, or three. Zero, it means it's a young plant. One means no berries. Two means some berries. Uh, using the bush gives one to two sweet berries and sets the age back to one. And then three is full berries. Using the bush gives two to three sweet berries and sets the age back to one. So, so we can play with, when placing our sweet berry bush, setting the age of the bush, which is kind of cool. The default age of the sweet berry bush when we place it is going to be zero normally, but we can sort of override that behavior and set it to two just by setting the property when we create it. So we can do sweet berry bush. So that'll give us a block that represents the sweet berry bush. And then we could do the age and set the age to two. Even though that's technically a number, it wants it as a string. So we're going to provide it as a string. Okay, let's try this out now. Okay, back on the server. So if we right click these blocks here, you can see that it's putting these sweet berry bushes. And then if we come back to our code and set it to zero, it should put only baby ones like that. There we go. So we're only getting baby sweet berry bushes now. So that's just yet another example of modifying the block state of a block by using the with property method and specifying the property that you want to set it. Pretty cool stuff, right? Another cool thing that you can do with blocks is set a custom handler to it. So you can do with handler. And to this, you can pass in a block handler. And basically what this is, is a custom event handler specifically for this block or whatever block you give it to. So what we're going to do is go back to our file thingy here and make a new package just called handlers. 
Okay, and we're going to make a new Java class called the, we'll just call it test handler because it's not really going to do anything too crazy. We're just going to test this feature out and we want to go ahead and do implements block handler from Mindstorm. And now we can click this and do alt enter to autocomplete or you can just hover over it and do implement methods. And what you need to do is implement at least one of these methods, which is the get namespace ID. But you also can choose these different methods here to override. So basically, these are going to be your event listeners for this specific block here. So every single time you, for example, place this block here, this will be triggered and you can listen to that and then handle that in different ways. We also have on destroy, on interact, on touch, all very cool stuff. So let's test out on place and on destroy. So you can hold control to select multiple of these here and then click OK. And we have to modify this namespace ID here to just give it a unique identifier so that it can be, you know, you knew a little uniquely identified. Um, so we can do namespace ID, namespace ID from Mindstorm Utils dot from. And now you just want to give it a unique identifier. I'm sure people will do this in different ways, but I think a good uh, rule of thumb here is just have the name of your, I guess, your server, whatever you're calling this, you know, application here as the first part of it. So we could do like Mindstorm tutorial for me. So Mindstorm tutorial and then a colon and then give it the name of the handler itself. So test handler. Or maybe you can put the name of like yourself, like my game name is Illuminati. It doesn't really matter what you put, just try and make it unique so that it doesn't conflict with other namespaces on your on your server. But yeah, once you have your namespace ID to identify this handler that we have here, we can now modify these methods here to actually handle different situations. So again, uh, this is gonna be on place. So this will be triggered whenever a block that has this handler is put down or placed rather, right? So with placement, we could do like placement, dot and we have all this information here like get block get instance get block position you can think of this as the events that we would normally have with our global event handler so usually have like event like this this is kind of a similar concept with it you can get information about the event that happened as a simple test here we could do something like s out test block placed at and then we could do the uh the block position so placement dot get block position and hopefully that should convert it to a string automatically for us We'll leave this one just for a second here, but once you have your block handler created, you can now assign it to different blocks that you have on the server. So for example, our new block that we have here, we can assign that block test handler to it. We can do that by doing new test handler, just like that. And now since it has been assigned that block handler, whenever we place this block, it will you know print out this message, okay? Let's try this out. Okay, back on the server now, so let's try this out. So boom, you interacted with a block. So it's still placing those blocks same as before, but if we check the console, it prints the message. So it says test block placed at, and then we have all these different coordinates here. So it's able to actually detect and handle the uh, the block placement as we would expect since we've assigned it as a handler to our new block here for the Sweetberry Bush. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. So previously we could just make, you know, regular event listeners and assign them to nodes and stuff like that, or the global event handler to handle stuff like the player block interact event. But now we can not only do that, but also assign handlers to specific blocks which is just really cool. So, you know, placing, destroying, interacting, other things can be handled directly on the block, on a block by block basis, basically. We can handle them per block, which is crazy. And if you just think about this further, you can give different handlers to different blocks and, and blocks can even share the same handler. So if I had just another block here, for example, if I just had my door again, so my oak door, just like that, I could give it a new instance of test handler if I want to, or I could just take it, make this into a variable test handler like that, and then pass that into both of these. And now both of these blocks, even though they're different, even though these are two different blocks, share the same handler. So the same code, so the same exact code from the same exact instance will be handled um, whenever that block is placed or whatever you're handling, okay? Anyway, so I could also go ahead and handle the on destroy for this block here. So whenever this block is broken, um, one thing that you can do is, since this is just destroy, it doesn't have a lot of information about who placed the block or rather destroyed the block. Um, one thing that you can do is actually is do if a destroy that we have is a instance of player destroy, that's how you know if a player destroyed the block. So that's how they chose to design that. So if it's a player destroy, then you know that you can do player destroy dot get player. So that's how you would get that information. So let's get the player and then we can send them a message saying something like you broke the test block. Just as an example, let's say that, you know, something happens on the server and the block is broken. 
this would only run if a player directly broke the block, not if like TNT exploded or something like that and the block broke. So that's why that might be useful. Okay, we're back on the server. Now we can break these and it says you broke the test block. So it's working how we might expect. Perfect. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys about, you know, working with blocks and placing blocks and setting properties and handlers and stuff like that. I think it's pretty simple to understand. At least I hope it is. And I think it's really cool. I mean, I think the syntax overall for everything with Mindstorm so far is just amazing. Even something as simple as creating blocks is so awesome. Just by being able to do block dot and then whatever block you want, you just, you know, type it. It's just so simple, so easy. And then for the position here, this is expecting either an XYZ or you can do a point. A point is implemented by two different, well, not just two, but the two main uh, implementations of this is the vector. So for example, um, var test vector is equal to, and we can do new vector VEC. You can see that this accepts a X, a Z, or just a single value or an XYZ. So we could put whatever coordinates inside of here that we want, like one, two, three, for example, and then we could do test vector dot. And now you can do different stuff with that vector. Um, you can add to it. You can do the absolute value, um, division. You can get the angle. So you can do a bunch of math operations on here, which is pretty cool. You can get it as a position. And a position is represented by POS, position. And that's the other implementation of the point uh, interface that we have that is expecting here. So points is either a vector or a position. So we could do var test POS for position is equal to new POS. And this is expecting something very similar, which is an XYZ. But a position also includes a yaw and a pitch. A yaw and a pitch is just uh, the basically the angle in which something is located. It's hard to explain, but... As an example, the XYZ just controls the coordinate of a block or a player entity or something like that. But the yaw and the pitch can control, for example, like where a player is looking or something like that, the angle in which that entity is facing. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're going to see both of these used in different places. For example, the event itself. So event dot get block position. This returns a block vector, which is just a implementation of vector that we have here. So you're going to see a lot of different variations of this, but these all inherit from point. So this means that you can pass any of these into um, a method like this that accepts a point. That's why we're able to do events.getBlockPosition, even though that's not a point, of course, but any of these other variations work too, okay? Anyway, so that's pretty much it for this episode, everybody. That's how you can work with blocks in Mindstorm. Hopefully you guys learned a lot in this episode. I think probably the most valuable part is the properties because knowing how to set uh, more advanced block properties that, that are not there by default is a pretty useful thing to know and the handlers are also pretty cool as well so with that said hopefully you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching everybody and i will see you guys next time so that's it for this video everybody i really hope you learned something new if you liked the video please hit the like button and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources but also really important join our discord we have a big community of over 5,000 programmers and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on if you want to support what i do on this channel please consider hitting the join button below and this will allow you to support my channel for as low as one dollar a month but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to for anyone that becomes a member on my channel you get a special rank on my discord server early access to new videos and you can just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace